Hello, this is Ellen Madono, and I'm coming to you from Tokyo Homeopathy. Actually, I'm located in Kamakura, which is a small town about an hour from Tokyo Station or the major stations of Tokyo, so it's a very convenient place. Um, and I mainly see uh, foreigners as, as, as a homeopath. I've been doing this for since about I, I started learning homeopathy about 2002 and I'm not a doctor I, I have a PhD but it's in anthropology my idea here is to give you all a way to do homeop do, do homeopathy and get the curative remedy without knowing too much about homeopathy. I think that if you get interested, you will follow up and find other ways to learn more. But first, you have to have experience with cured cases, and you have to begin to see how your cured cases actually match remedies. This is what a homeopath does, but seeing it in real life seems to be more effective than someone telling you about it and then going out looking for something that you really have a hard time finding. I, I did it the hard way. Um, I, I learned from books and from lectures and I didn't have a very good way of finding a good match for my remedies. So I didn't have many curative cases in the beginning, except where my teacher helped me. And where my teacher helped me, amazingly, um, the remedies were the right ones. Um, but it's because he had a lot of experience uh, finding the right remedies. So today what we're going to do is follow up on the case that um, an herbal herbalist who's uh, very interested in homeopathy did with me. Uh, she watched me taking the case and uh, we reviewed that case in another video. This time I'd like to go over how the software was used and the concepts behind what we did or even the mistakes that I did um, in in analyzing this case because this is if you can do this and you can take a case you probably can find the right remedy it's very the likelihood that you'll you find it is, is is very high and if you can do that I'm hoping that you'll want to learn more I unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you the case but I don't think it's that important because when you do a case you know what the patient is like and so it's very it's it, it for me it fixes the remedy and the nature of the remedy on my mind very well but in if you just hear me talking about the case it's not the same as actually witnessing that case and being a part of the healing process now this student is going to be able to go through that process and this will push her forward in her learning very quickly uh, and I hope that uh, you will have the same experience I will do everything I can to help you to have that experience what we're going to do is go through the process of looking for a remedy and so the student the herbalist student how she felt about the remedy is very important and then we're going to play with the repertorization graph and this is really playing around um, and finally we're going to evaluate symptoms watching for the effect on the repertorization and last of all we'll look at the top remedies using uh, my professional software and uh, you'll see that uh, what I did with it isn't very helpful. I think I could have done a better job had I not been um, taken the approach that I took, but 
you'll see and the value of using software like the, the, the software that you will, you will be learning will become clear and you'll also see why professional software doesn't always produce the greatest results. If English is not your first language or um, I'm talking too fast, whatever, please uh, set up your computer. Stop, stop the computer and set it up so that you can see um, a translation into your own language and you can uh, see subtitles of um, the English, what I'm saying in English. I'm hoping that anyone is, who is watching this video has already uploaded the software that Heiner Fry has provided. You need to set up the software to take your case. If you click here, you'll get all the symptoms. But really, what you to take the case, what you want to do is click on the checklist and also click on the polarity differences because that's what we're using to find the remedy, the curative rem remedy. If you close this case here, and save it here, you'll see that the polarity difference is going to come up. This is the primary thing that tells you which remedy is going to be the most healing. After the, I, I, af, after the repertorization is done, I always export it and I store my notes from the case and all the follow-ups and these um, repertorizations in a file. I don't leave it on the internet here. I, I think that's very useful. After we did this case, I shared my repertorization with the herbalist student who wants to check her own repertorization and see what she thinks. Everybody should try it on their own and, and see what they think. When we did the repertorization, we ended up with some middle-level reliability symptoms and some red level, the, the low reliability symptoms. Ideally we want um, high level reliability symptoms and you'll see that I added in some of these yellow symptoms but I checked the ones that are yellow and the red ones I definitely don't want. This red line here is very important all of the symptoms that are above the red line are the patient's symptoms. All of the symptoms that are the polar symptoms or the opposite symptoms are below. So lying on the side is better. The opposite symptom is lying on the side is worse. Pressure, worse from pressure, external pressure and is the opposite symptom is better from external pressure. First, uh, I, I look at the color of these um, next to the rubrics, thinking about are these really valuable rubrics? I've done the repertorization and I'm really looking at the reliability of the symptoms. So this, this color uh, reliability color thing is based on um, a stop and go stoplight. In my my experience a case is mainly built on these highly reliable symptoms. Um, I've tried to add in some of the yellow symptoms and sometimes they seem a little bit useful. Definitely I try not to use the low reliability symptoms. Now you understand this is Dr. Heiner Fry's research. Um, so uh, an ordinary repertory, even if it's a uh, polarity analysis repertory, will not have this up-to-date um, categorization of the reliability level of the symptom. It's really just in this, this software. What I came up with after I did the repertorization was NatMir was very high. Actually, we went through a, a lot of mess before this, and it, it's in the other video, okay? So you're not seeing the uh, kind of the process of weeding out uh, rubrics here. In the other video, we, we left out some of these rubrics. When you look at these polarity symptoms, another 
area to look at, look at is places where there's a lack of symptoms. There's a lack of symptoms here, here, here. So um, if, if you're looking at, 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 at something like this, you can see that there's a lot of lack of symptoms here. And places where there are no polarity symptoms like this are going to be not quite as strong as rubrics for that particular remedy. You know, the, each of these is a different remedy. If you if you look at the whole thing here, um, below the red line, this is all about Rustox. This is all about Lycopodium. These are all about Nat Muir. Okay, so uh, this this kind of thing, uh, this is another just something to keep in the back of your mind. The uh, robot of the commu computer is not going to tell you this. You just look at it and you, when you're putting in and taking out symptoms and sort of basically what I'm doing is I'm arguing with myself. I might cross these out because they're red, for example, and see how it affects the repertorization and see how it affects the whole case. Basically, as you're doing this analysis and as you're thinking about it, you're looking for what is central to this case. Okay, what is really important in this case? I didn't know the patient at all. I'd never met her. Um, this, the student had not talked about this person um, in any detail, so I really didn't know. But the, the person, the student who brought this patient um, to me knew her well. And I was arguing back and forth, maybe it's Nux vomica, okay? Be because uh, in earlier repertorizations, Nux vomica was high. China, in some repertorizations, was high. So I argued back and forth about these things. And then when you look at what cancels out these symptoms, you look at the contraindication. So... The contraindication is when the polarity symptom is higher than the other symptoms. So the this is standing worse, standing better. So the polarity symptom is the contraindication is higher than three is higher than one, well, higher than one here, right? So uh, and in the, and I may, remember I made a mistake. So. There was no way that Nux vomica could have been uh, the right remedy. But, you know, I'm, I'm working on this. So I'm not necessarily just totally believing in the, uh, that Nux, Nux vomica couldn't be the right one, excepting I had made a mistake with this. So I think if, if this had come up in the beginning, I, I wouldn't have considered Nux vomica. But all of these um, remedies, these big remedies, these are, this is not a big remedy, but these big remedies all have kind of multi-facets, and it's uh, Nux Vomica is this high-powered, high, hard-working, usually a guy, businessman. And um, if it doesn't fit, uh, I still know that Nux Vomica is also a very compassionate person. So I'm I'm willing to have some doubt and I'll argue about it. Same with China. Okay. Um, so the basic idea is less is more reliable. This is the golden rule. All right. And when we were first looking at the rubrics, we looked at these weather kind of uh, temperature kind of things and she was laying on ice and then putting hot pads on it because she'd been told. You have to be very careful about somebody else telling the patient that they do, should do something. You know, she may be fairly docile and she's doing what the doctor told her to do rather than feeling, thinking about what she actually feels. The person who brought her to me said that she knows that she's always opening the windows in her room and it makes the whole house very cold. You can bet that this person actually is better in, in cold. And then I asked, 
Well, should we include this? We shouldn't include it because it is the way she is all the time. We are starting with the situation now. And when she started school, the nodules in her breast began to form. We're limiting our symptoms to the things that have changed during this period. The way that she is in general is not a symptom that we're going to use. Okay, there was the hot pack and the ice that she was using, both of them. And it was kind of contradictory. So I decided I just, I really didn't, I wasn't very sure about this, whether hot made her better or cold made her be better. There was too much ambiguity and too much contradiction. So I didn't uh, add this into the repertorization at all. When you're... When you're choosing rubrics, Dr. Fry has added in these yellow marks here. And this is to kind of tell you that this rubric has other ones that are very close to it. She said that she gets more, this, this is painful when she's working and she's doing a, a waitress kind of job. That physical effort makes it feel worse. Her bouncing of her breasts also makes it feel worse, which means also that walking doesn't feel good. But the problem with putting all these in here, if it doesn't add something, you're kind of stuttering. And you want to avoid repeating the same thing. Sometimes if, if the rubric is very, very important in the case, very distinctive, and I don't have much, many rubrics, sometimes I'll add in a stutter because just to make it emphasize that this is really important. But in this case, I, I had to really think, it seems that the physical effort is more the problem. This is a very athletic girl, so it's very strange that physical effort is hurts. She's a girl who will uh, go and dive after a volleyball. Possibly she could have been even hurt and that uh, could have injured her breasts. I mean, she's that kind of very physically active girl. So this is very different from her general state. Okay, uh, Right now we're having COVID and she doesn't go walking outside. She doesn't go outside much. Uh, because of COVID, a lot of things have changed. So I decided, well, let's just stick to this. And this walking stuff is just not very clear at all anyway because of COVID. These three are very somewhat similar. Right, um, and it's 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 really pressure that that bothers her and rubbing that bothered her. She could touch it again. We're 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 kind of weeding out which are more important, and we didn't have a lot of rubrics, so I kind of just stuck to this. So when you're you're when we're in the process of checking through rubrics, it's important to to think about uh, these kinds of topics. Um, so one of the things is we're thinking about the val validity of the rubric. The validity of the rubric, in part, it has to do with, you know, how much, how much backing there is for the rubric. Does it have a polar, a polar symptom? Is it, um, of course, if it's a contraindicated, that's something that you you, you would think about uh, very deeply, and um, how how reliable it is. Okay, those are kinds of issues that have to do with the validity of the rubric. Then you're also going to think about the number of polarity symptoms. Are we getting polarity symptoms? It's this issue here. Is there, are there many polarity symptoms backing up the, the remedy that you're thinking about? Okay. Um, and contraindications. And then another thing you can do is try several repertorizations. By this I mean uh, when you're setting up your case, you can save this and you can make a copy of, of, the, of that case and actually change the repertorization so that you can make several repertorizations and see what happens. Usually what happens is I try rep one, rep one repertorization and then I think about it later and think, oh, I don't like that, something in there I didn't like. So I make a copy of the old repertorization and I start doing something different and see 
what the results are. Uh, that's, that's more the typical case for me. And then take notes about your rationale, especially in the beginning. I think maybe I've been doing cases for a very long time, so I don't take nice notes, but I think it, I might be a little bit clearer if I did, you know? I, but I'm really what I'm doing is I'm clicking around and just seeing what happens. Um, sort of like playing a game. This was earlier we got this Nux Vomica and Nat Mir. Nux Vomica came out stronger because I made this mistake. I mean, I'm just thinking about too many things, trying to handle the recording and too many things that have nothing to do with this uh, case taking. So you may you could make a mistake. This would be a pretty obvious mistake. And I go over my repertorization several times. I mean, uh, it's not that, that I think I'm making a mistake so much as I'm usually looking for something that is not needed, something to pare, pare down, something to do the golden rule, to make things, to, to, to have fewer rubrics, that have the fewest number of rubrics that is possible to clearly represent the case. But one thing you can think about is that this kind of mistake, I made it. And actually, when I went back and repertorized in, the, in, in my professional uh, repertory, uh, you'll find out that even that wouldn't have helped me very much. So we'll come back to this in a minute. Who is, I kind of already know who, who Nat Muir is, because Nat Muir is, I've had many patients who were Nat Muir. Um, patients. They they got better with Nat Muir. They're, these kind of people are deeply moved by grief. They have long-standing grief. And all this kind of things. And actually, there are lots of other remedies that have this. Just Nat Muir is really big on this. And it's the first, if you get this kind of picture, this kind of sensitive kind of person, you quickly think of Nat Muir. But what you have to do is to back up and see if there are other ones. But, you know, in the beginning, you're not going to be able to do that because you just don't know enough remedies. So you you research Nat Muir, and this part of her, about her uh, builds a protective wall and feels abandoned. Um, you don't have this kind of this combination with this as often. This is, you know, not as common blocking out the world, blocks out her emotions, uh, reserved and taciturn. So it's it's the combination uh, that kind of brings it out for you, makes it clear. A uh, combination of different aspects of Nat Muir. If you've got all of this, you're pretty sure it's Nat Muir. Okay? Um, and then there's, there's the Nux Vamaka. And, you know, they're, the, they're always busy. They want to challenge. They're kind of the opposite because they're, um, she withdraws, right? They're not withdrawing at all. They seek a challenge. But I don't know this young woman who came as the, the patient. And she, she said that she, she, the breast nodules started when she started school. And she was hoping that she would be able to um, be out in the field and play soccer, and then, then COVID happened, and she couldn't even have any hopes of doing any sports. Uh, she seemed like a very outgoing person. She's starting, she's doing preparation for college, and she's not going to be able to have help she's, f for the college preparation, as much help as she was hoping for from her school. This seems like a very competitive, outgoing kind of person. And actually, Nat Muir could also be like this, so it's possible. I'm, I can, and here's another one, you know, very efficiency-oriented, wants things faster, done better. And she doesn't like inefficient people. She's very, she's a fairly demanding kind of person. So I thought, well, can I take it on face value? We, I, there was a mistake, but we had these two top remedies, right? So, what happens in that case? Hmm? Well, we have the main symptoms with their characteristics that we get off the check, mainly off the polarity symptoms, right? Polarity symptoms. 
And then there are additional symptoms that I later brought in from from the whole repertory of the Bowenhausen repertory. I, I put in these additional symptoms. I think I put them up here. Um, yeah, all these things like the pressure of the clothes, the injuries to glands. Uh, these were yellow with the uh, polarity symptom being red. These are not in the checklist at all. These, these, but they represent the nature of um, her breast complaints. And so I thought, okay, I'll try out representing the breast complaints because most of these are not clearly about glands and they're not clearly about, they're not very clear at all, right? And these didn't add at all to the argument for Nat Murek's Actually, there was a counter-argument, but it wasn't very reliable information, right? Um, and it added a lot to Nux Vomica here. You see here the, the counter-information is not there. Nux Vomica got all kinds of support uh, for this. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I should pay more attention to Nux Vomica, okay? because the basis of the case is the checklist and then the additional symptoms that you're going to find over here and finally these mental states that are kind of things that you know about the remedy uh, by researching the remedy and if you know these are polycrests so if you research these remedies um, you are going to find a description of them as as a kind of mental emotional uh, description. So there are cases where there are only mind symptoms and then you look for physicals that can help you support the case even if the patient doesn't care about their phys physicals. In some cases that are only physical and then the disposition usually comes out in the case taking process. So in this case we had breast nodules and the patient really only wanted these, wanted help with these. But the dis disposition came out and talking to uh, the herbalist, I found that, oh, there are things that this, this person could really use some help from homeopathy that are not about um, breast nodules. So I thought more about, about the dis disposition. And according to, you know, a person who knows her, the person who brought her, she does fit this picture, okay? Um, by the way, this all comes from a book uh, by Vicki Madison and Franz Kuss. And it's, it's a um, uh, very, very nice book. It's full of wonderful pictures, and a lot of them have a little humor. Uh, so uh, I, I, I really enjoy uh, uh, reading them myself and looking at them. Uh, sometimes a picture for me uh, is, says a lot or it's easier to remember. So you see here that nothing is proved uh, by, by adding all these physical symptoms here. You know, the, they're, they're all red down here and they're yellow up here. And so what is really useful is to research the Materia Medica. And other repertories are also useful, okay? Uh, and then we found out that, that, you know, I had made a mistake with this standing worse. And so Nux Vomica was actually canceled out. And I've taken many repertorizations of this. So you think, you see that these things are in different orders. It's because I've, it's a different repertorization. But no matter how you do it, uh, Nat Muir comes out on top, actually, if you, if you took, uh, get rid of this standing better, okay? And one thing is that if you get a cured case, like the herbalist is probably going to get a cured case from this, and by knowing her patient, she will have mastered Nat Muir. Of course, she's doing a lot of research and looking into uh, Nat Muir and learning about Nat Muir. But her understanding of Nat Muir is much firmer than it would be if she had 
only studied from a book. So I can't overemphasize the importance of actually creating cured cases. Even if you don't want to be a homeopath, you just want to know about this. And even if you help people with their colds and flus, it's fine. You don't have to do miracle work. You will learn these remedies by doing that kind of fairly simple work. It's, it's you know, it's... It's, and it's significant to people when they have jobs to do and they can't afford to be sick. It really helps people. So I think it's really worth it to take on people's cases and look after them. I personally, for this kind of work, want to be associated with people who take, make that effort. Um, and I'll support you because I think it's important. What really came out was these physical symptoms are not so important. There's a kind of a hierarchy of symptoms. The mind symptoms are over the generalizations. And generalizations, they come from a chapter of called the generalities chapter. But it means it's all, it, it happens all over the body. But by definition, um, Bowen, the Bowenhausen method is looking for putting greater eff emphasis on anything that happens all over the mind and body that's associated between mind and body and that happens in several places in the body. So those generalizations and the mind symptoms have high priority. But you see that in polarity analysis we go after first these physical easy to uh, find main symptoms that are uh, what makes you feel worse and better. Uh, they're actually not mind symptoms and they're not generalities either. They're not, um, so it's, it's a much easier method. But by taking these kinds of symptoms here that, we, that I took, these are the local symptoms. These are not the generality. Yes, she comes with the breast, breast nodules. And yes, she wants to cure those. And if your remedy does not cure those, you need to find another remedy. You haven't succeeded. It's not that these are to be ignored. Uh, obviously, all of our, our modalities, all of our better or worse from, all had to do with her, 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 her breasts. In terms of the importance in the general way of thinking about um, a case, these local symptoms are not that important. So it's not very surprising that the local symptoms are not here. Okay, this is like not a very bad result. Okay, it's not something that should discourage you and say, okay, can't be Natmure because none of these main concerns of hers are here. These are local symptoms and them not being here is not, not at all the end of the world. But you see all these other remedies, they all got heavy rep representation here, right? So... When I did a repertorization uh, with my big garbage computer, there's no gnat near down here, down this other side here. And Nux Vomica is here. I mean, the truth of a computer repertory, computerized repertory is, if you put in garbage, you're going to get garbage. Okay? And it's very hard. I'm not down putting down these kind of programs because they're extremely useful um, and very helpful. I, uh, but if I'm only looking for local symptoms, in terms of the analysis of the case, it's probably I'm putting in garbage symptoms and I'm getting out garbage. So that's what I did here, okay? All of these have to do with the symptoms of, of the breast, okay? And how did it feel? Um, what was the pain like? Where was it? Uh, all that kind of stuff is here. And so those, these are all local symptoms. And then I took this one that she's tearful. She's crying a lot. And she's irritable because of the pain. And so I took those as my, as my mind symptoms, so to speak. And... I came out with a, a repertorization that, that doesn't have Nat Near in it at all. 
Okay, it's like I did a repertorization like this. Okay, I put in just these local symptoms. And Natmir did not come out as a major breast nodule remedy. I know you all want to find a breast nodule remedy, but actually that is not a good approach in homeopathy. Okay, the approach of the um, a polarity analysis is is a much better approach. And actually, the patient's mind symptoms, I don't really know them very well because I don't know her for very well. And this is the first time for me to meet her. her. Uh, it's not a very good bet that I'm going to be able to use those mind symptoms to find out a good remedy for her. Maybe down the line, maybe this doesn't help her with um, other problems that she has that are more uh, on emotional level. But it's unlikely that I'm going to be so easily going to be able to find them. Now, everybody kind of in homeopathy knows that weird symptoms are useful. And so she has kind of a tickling itch in her nipples, and she also has it in the, in the, on the nodules, in the skin on the nodules. So, and it alternates between the two places. So I put in all of these weird ones. Uh, according to theory, Kentian kind of theory, if you get the weird ones, you, it's going to um, narrow down the play, playing field. But this is um, 65 ru rubrics. This one is 339. Uh, They're not that small. And they certainly did not bring me to Nat Muir. Of course, we're going to have to find out if Nat Muir works. The herbalist is still waiting for um, the remedies to come from the pharmacy. It, this is a contraindication, and so it, it, Nat Nux Vomica was blocked out, right? And so my previous understanding that it was uh, it could be either Nux Vomica or Nat Muir was wrong because I'd made a mistake. This one mind symptom I felt was really important for this particular person. She really emphasized that she needs to be alone when she's feeling bad. Um, and there's lots of people who want to cuddle up with someone else when they feel bad. So it's it's kind of a distinctive symptom. It's yellow, but and, 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 and red down here, so it's not very strong. But definitely we needed this in the repertorization. It's central to the case. It's central to who she is. Okay? So we come up with a polarity difference like this. Okay, and these other ones here are 10. And You could make a, an argument for both of these, but by this time I was, and after talking to the herbalist, I was pretty convinced that, yeah, it is Nat Muir. The rule of thumb in closing is to go for the center of the case, to look for what is really central to this case, what is really truly relevant to this case. Use the timeline. Only use rubrics that are within the period when the patient has started having this change that is causing them a problem. Don't take their entire the way they were all the time, the way they are all the time. Don't take those rubrics, okay? And you all, you always have to check these rubrics with the patient because they don't know that that's what your strategy is. Look at these rubrics that are kind of in a cluster, these ones that are yellow that uh, Dr. Uh, Fry has organized for us, the ones in yellow. And, and, and don't, and, and try to narrow down the fewest rubrics. Temper, temper uh, sensitivity has the most of those, so you have to be very careful of, the, of those weather and temp temperature sensitivity rubrics. My feeling is, what my experience is, I've, I've been doing this now for three years, is eliminate rather than falsely expand. Dr. Uh, Fry has someplace on his site, he says you want at least 18 up to 16, but I found the, the remedy with three, you know, in doing a lot of research. I think that um, falsely expanding really can confuse you. So 
this narrowing down is is a very important strategy and um, you'll see me doing it in other cases also so master that the herbalist asked me if she should get this book and although it really has excellent cases it's beautifully written and the strategies are well described and he doesn't make any careless, careless mistakes either they're all very good cases um, but if you are a beginning homeopath you don't want to buy this book right now because you've got to save your pennies for the more important books and so we'll be talking about that more uh, but this is not something that you should immediately go out and buy I think it's like $75 it's a it's a medical book so it's not cheap um, it's well worth it but it's it's not the first thing that you need to buy okay so uh, I would suggest you look at his videos and uh, look at anything online that he has articles and things online um, I have things on my website uh, but you know you don't have to buy this book in closing I think that um, polarity analysis is a way for you to have small successes in the beginning and this way you can learn remedies from cured cases and even if you're a beginner you need to have cured cases and I strongly encourage you to learn to the extent where you actually are taking cases. You don't have to make a career of this or make money out of it, but it's important uh, that you get a feeling for remedies by experiencing uh, the people who were cured by those remedies. You, can, you begin to uh, realize a lot about people. I really um, would appreciate it if you would share these videos uh, with a larger community of people because I think that this is a form of power Home homeopathy and all forms of alternative medicine are a way of resisting really the dictatorship of standard medicine I think that um, we as people need to have power and so click on the subscribe button and um, make those bots come to us. Okay, this is Ellen Madono from Tokyo Homeopathy and I hope to meet you online or even in person, whatever is possible. Thank you for listening.